Have you ever been asked a weird interview question? Something that you weren't sure how to respond to? You know, I don't like these type of questions where it has nothing to do with your job, but I do like tough technical questions. And one of my friends, probably 15 years ago, he gave me a really good question, which I use even today. And this question I'm recently asked quite a few people as we were interviewing people for a technical position, and I was actually pretty shocked at the responses I got. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to discuss this question because I ask it fre frequently and I know other people ask a similar type of question and just kind of explain what I'm looking for in the answer here and also tell you some of the responses that I've heard. So you said you're pretty good at networking, right? Yes. Networking? Yeah, like I'm a CCXE at networking. Yes, I am an expert in networking. Okay, good. So um, I'm gonna ask you to describe to me in as much detail as you possibly can what's going on in the situation I'm gonna describe. So imagine there is a, a host a Windows host on a network, and it's connected to a network with a router. And behind that router, just on the other side, is another host, which is a web server. And let's just say it's uh, mydomain.com. All right, now, on this Windows machine over here, you open up a browser and you type in mydomain.com and you hit enter. Now, describe to me in as much detail as possible what happens on the networking level. Uh, well, uh, first, um, it depends on what browser they use. Oh yeah, that's a, that's a great, qu classic question. So uh, first, it, uh, it's gonna ping the server, right? And when it pings the server, the server is gonna reply with a bunch of information for it, and it's gonna use that information to go and send more information to the server. It's gonna, it's gonna act back to it. Well, first, um, it's, it's gonna ping the server, um, so, Let's uh, just take a step back for a second. Um, so it knows it's mydomain.com. Um, how, uh, how does it know what IP address to go to? So it's gonna ping the DNS server. Oh, well, yeah, if you wanna know that, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so it's gonna, it's gonna know the name. So, um, so DNS, it uses DNS. Uh, so it's gonna ping the DNS server. Yeah, first it pings the DNS server and that's how it knows the name. Okay, so let's, let's just say the DNS server is on a local network. Um, how, how does it know how to communicate to the DNS server? Right, right, so it's gonna, uh, it'll hit up the DNS server for the address. Uh, yeah, yeah, so it's gonna ping the DNS server to, to get the name, right? To, or to get the IP address. Um, well, the DNS server tells it the address. Okay, it's on a local network. Um, is there like a local network addressing scheme or a protocol on a layer two level that, uh, that it would use? Um, yeah, it's, uh, like, um, the, 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 the Mac table, that's it. Um, it, well, it, it's, it's stored, uh, it's stored in, in, uh, in a history. Uh, okay, so every computer uh, has a Mac address, right? Um, how would your host learn the Mac address of the DNS server. Is there a table that maybe it, it, it would look at? Uh, so it looks it up. It looks it up on the computer. The computer tells it that. Y yeah, the, the MAC address table. Or, or the ARP table, the ARP table. Okay, yeah, it's uh, ARP table. Okay, so let's, let's say it, it, it knows the IP address of the server, mydomain.com. So now let's talk about what happens in this connection. Yeah, so it's gonna ping the web server. It's gonna ping the web server. Uh, yeah, so it's gonna um, it's gonna ping the server. Um, so um, it uh, it pings the router. It's gonna ping the router, and then the router tells it where to send it. Okay, so um, is there a table maybe that it needs to look at to figure out that um, I, where where it needs to go to, like uh, where it needs to send the, the packets to? Why it needs to send it the default gateway? Uh, so it's gonna, um, it'll find that by pinging the router. It's gonna ping the router. 
Well, it's gonna look at its cash first to see if it's in the cash. Okay, um, all right. Um, now let's let's just say on the router side. That, like, you're fam are you familiar with any routing protocols? Oh yeah, yeah, I know, yeah, I know all the routing protocols. Yeah, <laughs> of course. Well, I know uh, I know BGP. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I know, I know them, I do, yep. Okay, uh, what about just like a routing table? Oh, oh yes, the routing table, of course, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, routing table, yeah, yep. Oh, oh, <laughs> routing tables, yes, of course, yeah, routing tables, yeah. Okay, so, okay, let's just say it's just communicating to the web server, like, how does that packet look like? Uh, so, um, uh, there's like a, uh, a packet header, um, and uh, it has like all the information in it. Uh, you know, Packet has different different parts of it and everything, uh, but uh, um, it, it puts in information there for, for, the, for the tunneling part. Yeah, and then it's uh, it, it's so that it knows where to, where to send and receive it, how to act back to it. There's a preamble in the packet, and uh, like, does it use a, um, a layer four protocol, or does it use a specific Oh yeah, port? yeah, so web server uses a port, uh, uh, port 80. It goes on the web server port. Web server uh, uh, uses port uh, uh, port 23. Wait, that's only if it's uh, encrypted. If it's not encrypted, it uses port 25. So do you know the difference between TCP and UDP and how that works? Yeah, TCP and UDP, classic. Yeah, so um, uh, they are the same, but they are different. You know, there's sometimes where you want to use TCP and sometimes where you want to use UDP. So, oh yeah, so good, excellent question. So, uh, it's kind of like the difference between digital and analog, similar to that. Um, one's reliable uh, or um, I think TCP is used, used more often than UDP. So, as you can imagine, I exaggerated the interviews just a little bit. But you'd be surprised the answers that I got back. Uh, for some reason, everybody was always saying that it's gonna ping the server, it's gonna ping this. You know, I heard it so often that I started to question myself. Maybe it really does ping the server. Of course it doesn't. Uh, I don't know why that's a default answer for people though. Just I guess maybe sound, sounds technical. But let me just give you a word of advice. If, if you just try to blur out words to sound technical, it's actually a little bit of a turnoff because it just kind of like, all right, you're saying completely the wrong thing as opposed to just saying, look, I'm not sure how it works. I can look it up. But let me just kind of give you the answers I'm looking for or really a, a small part of what I'm looking for. Uh, and you know, if, if the question was asked to me, of course I'd clarify, where do you want me to narrow the score, the scope, how much detail do you want? And typically it's like, what you would see if you put a, a network sniffer, right? Like something like Wireshark. If you were running Wireshark, what would you see happen? So, and, and here is kind of what I'm looking for. I'm looking for layer two, three, and four information. So basically it's, first thing that happens, it, mydomain.com. The computer needs to know where is mydomain.com. So there's a few things the host would do, like check its, uh, um, check its DNS cache, and then to go and check its host file. And if it doesn't have information, then it make a DNS request. And this is kind of where it starts going on, on the network layer. Uh, so a DNS request, UDP port 53, makes it to the DNS server. We said the DNS server is local, so it needs to know what is the MAC address of its DNS server. Now the DNS server would have in the system settings, whether it's statically configured or handed out by DHCP, but it should be there. Now what the MAC address is, it has to learn what that is. And typically it will have it in this cache unless it just booted up. So if it just booted up, it do an ARP request and say, who is uh, or who has uh, uh, so-and-so IP address and you get an ARP response back with the MAC address. Uh, and then it put it in this ARP cache and, and it'll hold there for a while. Uh, but then once it learns that, it constructs a packet, UDP 53, and sends it off the local network directly to that MAC address, which is the, the DNS host. And the DNS uh, response would come back, of course, responding with either another C name, which means it has to do a lookup again, or an A record with an IP address uh, of, the, of the web server. So once it gets the, the IP address, um, of course, it, it stores it in its local cache, and then it goes and says, okay, I need to send a packet over to this IP address. Uh, it's HTTP, which is port 80. So it constructs a packet with, uh, with port 80 with a destination of that IP address, and it's got uh, mydomain.com uh, 
uh, in the HTTP header information. Uh, let's just skip all the proxy and, and everything else that would go along with uh, confusing the situation, just to shorten the answer. But basically, then it goes through the same process. Uh, checks this routing table. Where do I send this? Um, if, if it doesn't happen in this routing table, that uh, means there's not a specific interface. It goes, okay, then it goes to this default gateway. Default gateway, layer two, do I have the MAC address? It's in, it's in my ARP cache. No. Do an ARP request. Again, who is, comes back. Uh, goes back with the uh, MAC address, and then it sends it to the, ga the gateway, the router. The router goes, looks at its routing table, same thing, looks, okay, where is this, where do you send it to? Again, the layer two, it needs to check its ARP table and send it off to the host. Now the host, the web server, receives this packet on port 80, it's listening on port 80, and goes, okay, uh, here's a SYN packet, right? It's meaning it's a TCP connection establishment. So it, 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 it's valid and everything. I'm not gonna go through the, the host things like uh, maybe IP tables or firewalls or anything like that, but let's just uh, assume everything is there. It receives a SYN packet and then it constructs a SYN ACK packet and sends it back the same way, right? Looking at its routing table, um, it would have the, the ARP cache already because they're already communicating with, with the host over here, the, the router, and sends it back all along the same path. And I'm gonna skip all the details that I just went through. And then, of course, the, uh, the host, the Windows machine, would send an ACK packet back to them, and now they establish a TCP session. Now, if there's a firewall in the middle on that router or anything, it would also create a session session table. Um, so now you have a session establishment, and now it, it continues the communication um, you know, from an HTTP, more of an application layer perspective. But that's really what I'm looking for from a networking perspective. I'm looking at things like the web server runs on 480, 443 if it's SSL, DNS is UDP 53, looking at the MAC address, uh, the ARP table, how it, how it determines that, how it, it, it requests a MAC address, um, looking at routing tables, uh, those simple type of things. And you know, if you don't know those, uh, those are just basic things they help in everyday troubleshooting when you're out there trying to figure out what's going on in the network. And when I'm looking for a support engineer, they really have to know these type of things. Now, um, it, hopefully you found this video useful, uh, not just to answer an interview question, but hopefully it's gonna help you understand uh, networking a little bit better. Uh, if you have any que questions, leave them in the comments below. If you have any comments, leave them in the comments below. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and uh, I'll see you next time.